Um, even if this lecture does end up being brief, it's extremely important. This is one of the main applications of linear algebra to other fields of mathematics. Um, it's what all of this stuff with the eigenvalues and eigenvectors was building up to. Um, in spite of the result I'm going to um, present, I mean, it's a centuries old result that people are still using today. I used it in my graduate thesis. So it's a really big deal. And I mean, you might have seen this in culture. If you took culture this free, you might have seen the Jacobian defined. But now we're going to talk about it in terms of differential equations. And you haven't, or if it was defined um, differently, say that we have autonomous differential equations. The x dt equals f of x comma y, dy dt equals g of x comma y. Then the Jacobian is a matrix of partial derivatives. And I don't know, I don't think calculus three is actually a prerequisite of this course. So let's make sure we're all on the same page about what these partial derivatives are before we go any further. Let's say we have a function that involves x and y x times y plus x squared plus the sine of y or something like that. If we write this f with a little x in front of it, this is what's called a partial derivative and it is a derivative. And when we take this derivative, we're going to treat x as a variable, but we're going to treat y like a constant. So let's look at x, y. We're treating y as a constant here. And if we have x times a constant, say x times five, and we take its derivative, the derivative is the constant. The derivative of five x is five. So here, if we're treating x as our variable and y as a constant, the derivative, the partial derivative with respect to x of x times y is y. We're treating x as a variable here. The derivative of x squared is 2x, straightforward. We're treating y as a constant. So the sine of y is also a constant, like the sine of two is just some number. And the derivative of a constant is zero. And similarly, you can take the partial derivative with respect to y. And it's going to flip the rules that x and y, maybe 
These are habits from when I have physical rightful words. There's probably no point in trying to cram everything at the bottom when I can just start a new frame, x, y plus x squared plus the sign of y. If we take the derivative with respect to y, now x is the constant and y is the variable. And again, if we have like a constant times a variable and we take the derivative, the constant remains. So the derivative of x, y is x. If x is a constant, then x squared is a constant. Like three squared is nine, it's still a constant. And the derivative of a constant is zero. The derivative of the sine is the cosine. So those are the partial derivatives. Treat one of the, I mean, we've got two variables, but we're only going to treat one of them like a variable, the other gets treated like a constant. And the Jacobian is the matrix of these partial derivatives. And I'm not using function notation here, but the Jacobian is a matrix of functions. Like these partial derivatives are all functions. The Jacobian is used as a tool to analyze fixed points. And it's used in the following way. Suppose we have these autonomous differential equations. And suppose that we have a fixed point up here, call it X star, Y star. And we want to know the stability and the type of the fixed point. So we want to know if it's stable, asymptotically stable, neutrally stable, unstable. And we also want to know the type, if it's a node, if it's a saddle, if it's a proper node, if it's an improper node, if it's a center or a spiral. What we're going to do, we've got this original system. We're going to use the Jacobian to define a new system. In particular, we're going to look at X prime equals the Jacobian with X star, Y star plugged inside of it times X. So the Jacobian is a matrix of functions, but when we take the specific value, X star, Y star, and plug it into the Jacobian, it just becomes a numerical matrix. And we can use this numerical matrix to define a new differential equation. And this new differential equation as a fixed point at the origin. And we can 
find the stability of the origin, we can classify the origin. That's what we um, were talking about at the end of class Tuesday. And we do this by looking at the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors of the Jacobian. Like maybe we find that the Jacobian has a positive eigenvalue and a negative eigenvalue. If we find that, if the Jacobian had a positive and a negative eigenvalue, then it is an unstable saddle. And trajectories look like this. And the great result, let me unclutter this. The great result of differential equations is that if we now go back to look at this original system, it is going to share the type and stability. So if the Jacobian has a positive and a negative eigenvalue, making the origin an unstable saddle. Then going back to the original differential equation, this fixed point is an unstable saddle. And I should say that there are a few conditions that we need um, to be satisfied for this to work. I'll get to the conditions in a moment. But um, this is a very powerful result. Um, we are really interested, I mean, in all fields of, I was going to say all fields of mathematics, maybe that's overstating it, but in almost every applied discipline, we're interested in fixed points. Like at the moment I'm doing, um, I'm collaborating with someone in the business department on a paper, we're looking at, well, the details don't really matter, I guess, but we're using fixed points in our research. Like we have economic models and we're looking at fixed points of the model. So this is really pervasive and it's something that we're really interested in across a wide range of disciplines. So that's the purpose of the Jacobian. We'll do an example in a moment. I should say um, there are limitations to the Jacobian and the primary limitation of the Jacobian is that over here we have global behavior while here we have local behavior. And let's try to work out what we mean by that. Let's say, let's look at X prime equals A X. And let's say there is a fixed point at the origin. We don't have to say it, it's just always true. And let's say this fixed point has some type and stability. Let's keep with the saddle. So we've got an, an eigenvector pointing out and an eigenvector pointing in. 
No matter where we star on the Cartesian plane, this saddle and these eigenvectors are going to tell us how our trajectory acts. Like maybe we start nowhere near the fixed point. Maybe we start way down there. Well, we're still going to have a saddle trajectory. We're going to be swept towards the origin until we get too close to this eigenvector. And then we're going to be swept along that eigenvector. So even though we didn't start anywhere near the fixed point, we're still being controlled by the fixed point. And this is what I meant by global behavior. Now, a nonlinear system doesn't have that property. If we have a nonlinear system, and there's a fixed point up here, and we figure out that the fixed point is a saddle, that tells us what happens near the fixed point. If we start near the fixed point, we'll be swept along one of the eigenvectors. But this isn't global behavior. Once we get far away from the fixed point, we could do something else. Maybe once we get far away from the fixed point, we wind up spiraling in towards a different fixed point, for example. So, but, or maybe, um, I mean, maybe we don't do that, but maybe we just sort of go off towards infinity in some other direction. So finding the stability of fixed points is local behavior. It tells us what happens near the fixed points, but it doesn't tell us what happens on the entire Cartesian plane. And I mean, ordinarily, the fixed points have some, I mean, in applications, the fixed points have some kind of important real world meaning. Like if you're looking at a model of a disease, a fixed point is kind of, okay, this disease is going to just stay in the population on some level. Some number of people will always be sick. It won't go away entirely, but it also won't become an epidemic. And I mean, that's where most diseases are at in the practice. So um, fixed points usually have real world meanings and therefore, you know, being able to say what happens near a fixed point is valuable. So this shouldn't be taken to mean that this kind of analysis isn't helpful, but it is important to understand the limitations of this kind of analysis. Another limitation of this kind of analysis is that assume that our variable is t, i. So x and y are both changing with time. Um, fixed point analysis isn't giving us any kind of temporal information. Like maybe we're looking at a population model and we've got a predator species and 
upgrade your species. And we've got a fixed point. And even without having any equations on the board, it makes sense that the origin is a fixed point. The origin represents mutual extinction. And yeah, if both the species are extinct, both the species are going to stay extinct. So it makes sense that this is a fixed point. And maybe we'll actually, we'll actually look at a model like this next week, but maybe we find that the fixed point has some kind of asymptotic stability properties. Maybe the fixed point is um, a, a proper node. So if we start near the fixed point, We converge to the fixed point. Well, this is making a prediction. It's telling us that if the predator and the prey species are both small, so if we start near the extinction, then they'll go extinct. And I mean, you can see how that could happen conceptually. The predators wipe out the prey because there's a small prey population and then they go extinct because there's nothing for them to eat. So you can see how that might happen, but they're not getting any temporal information here. Like if we start with a hundred wolves and 50 elk, are they going to be gone next year? Are they going to be gone in a decade? Is this a purely sort of mathematical thing where according to our model, they'll go extinct 2000 years from now, but, but that's not really saying anything because so much will change over the course of two millennia. Just from looking at the fixed points, there is no answer to that question. So that's the other, what I would say, is the other main limitation of fixed point analysis. There's also the limitation that not every fixed point can be studied this way. Two, Use the Jacobian the differential equation must be almost linear near the fixed point. And this almost linearity um, is two different properties. And if we have them both, we're almost linear. Let's first give the property that I have the least to say about. The Jacobian cannot have zero as an eigen value. 
And this is why I mentioned this idea Tuesday. This is why on Tuesday, when we were classifying the origin, we talked about like eigenvalues can be positive, eigenvalues can be negative. We never asked what happens if the eigenvalues are zero. And that's because if the eigenvalues are zero, our major application of this fails, so who cares? Second, the fixed point must be isolated. So a system of differential equations can have um, multiple fixed points. A system of differential equations, in fact, can have infinitely many fixed points, like so x prime equals the sine of y and y prime also equals the sine of y. Then um X prime and Y prime are both zero when Y equals, um, let's see, the sine of zero is zero, the sine of pi is zero, the sine of negative pi is zero, negative two pi, positive two pi. I mean, there are an infinite number of values of y that will make both of these things zero. So we can have infinitely many fixed points. That is not inherently a problem that will stop us from using the Jacobian. But if we're going to use the Jacobian, the fixed points need to be spread out. Like we can have infinitely many fixed points as long as they're sort of spread out on the plane and not clumping up. These fixed points are isolated and we can formalize this idea by saying that a fixed point is isolated if we can draw a circle around the fixed point that doesn't include any other fixed point. So shades of real analysis, if any of you have taken that class with our epsilon neighborhoods. So all of these fixed points that I've drawn, there are infinitely many of them, but they're all isolated. Um, just to be clear, though, if they're trying to study a specific fixed point, you only need that fixed point to be isolated. So maybe, maybe not all of your fixed points are isolated. Maybe you have an entire line of fixed points there. And there's a fixed point here, 
and it's not isolated because any circle you draw around it contains other fixed points. Well, that means we can't use the Jacobian to look at this slide. But if we wanted to study this fixed point, it's isolated, we can use the Jacobian to study it. Um, similarly with the eigenvalue thing, you're taking the um, Jacobian at fixed points. So we might be able to study one fixed point using the Jacobian, but not be able to study a different fixed point using the Jacobian. Um, an easy real world example where um, we have non-isolated fixed points is the SIR model. And I won't remind us about this in detail because we're going to study it um, a little later in the course, next week, week after next, something like that. But let's say we're looking at the number of susceptible people in an epidemic and the number of infective people in an epidemic. Without writing any equations on the board, we can intuit some fixed points. In particular, we're thinking of an infective disease that is passed from sick people to non-sick people, the healthy people. So the spread of this disease requires there to be sick people to spread the disease. If there are no sick people, um, that's, well, this, this isn't quite right. That's modify this slightly. We're going to some susceptible and recovered people together. Um, so if there are no if there's nobody to spread the disease, if everybody is susceptible or recovered, the disease won't spread and everyone will stay susceptible and recovered. And that gives us an entire line of fixed points. Everywhere where the number of infective people is zero is a fixed point. And none of these fixed points are isolated. So we can't use the Jacobian to study their stability. I guess we should give an example. We'll, um, we'll put off real world examples until next week, but um, this is what we're getting to. And it's by far my favorite part of this course when we can actually use differential equations to look at models. For now, that's, Look at a made up differential equation. And let's try to find the fixed points. Um, finding fixed points is by no means trivial. It's often something you do with computer assistance. Um, this we can probably do by hand. 
because everything has been very conveniently factored for us. So to have a fixed point, x prime has to be zero and y prime has to be zero. There are two ways that x prime could be zero if x equals two y or if x equals zero using the zero product property here. And there are two ways y prime could be zero if x equals two or if y equals zero. So potentially there are four fixed points. If x equals two and x equals two y, or I should say potentially there are four ways to have fixed points. If x equals two and x equals two y, that would be a fixed point. If x equals two and x equals zero, that would be a fixed point. If y equals zero and x equals zero, that would be a fixed point. If y equals equals zero and x equals two y, that would be a fixed point. And I mean, even as I said this, it was presumably clear that some of these combinations can't actually happen. In particular, x equals two and x equals zero is out. So let's look at the remaining possibilities. X equals two and X equals two Y. Well, this could happen. For this to happen, Y would have to be one. So X equals two, Y equals one is a fixed point that came from the combination that I just erased. The link between X equals two Y and X equals two. Let's see, X equals zero and Y equals zero. Now there is certainly no problem there. The origin is a fixed point. Then this last combination, y equals zero, x equals two y. Well, that's giving us a fixed point that we already found. If X is zero, if Y is zero and X is two Y, that's the origin, zero comma zero. And we already found that fixed point. So at the end of the day, we have two fixed points. 2, 1, and 0, 0. And let's see what we can do with these. We'll find the Jacobian. I am, we are, I mean, the, we have a lot of models actually. I mean, I maybe was kind of dismissive, but having this model where everything's fat is not some super unrealistic thing. We'll look at it when we look at the predator-prey model, for example, it will have this form. I can, it, it's a weakness, maybe it's just because I don't teach calculus three. I can never find partial derivatives unless I 
faster and multiply these things out. So let me find my next frame, x prime equals x squared minus 2xy y prime equals xy minus 2y. And we'll find the Jacobian. So, top row corresponds to top equation bottom row corresponds to bottom equation. If you're having trouble remembering the Jacobian, that's, that's how I, wow, the Jacobian was stated way back. But if you're having trouble finding the Jacobian, that's how I always remember it. Top row, top equation, bottom row, bottom equation. And then, I mean, we always have these ordered pairs and X is first, Y is second. So first column, first variable, second column, second variable. So we want to start in the upper left with the partial derivative of of the first equation with respect to x. So we'll be treating x as a variable, y as a constant. And we get 2x minus 2y. Now we'll treat y as the variable and x as the constant. So x squared is just a constant. Its derivative is zero. We get negative 2x. Now we'll take the second equation. If X is a variable and Y is a constant, then uh, that de the derivative is just Y. I mean, if X is a variable, Y is a constant, then negative two Y is a constant. It disappears when we take the derivative and we're just left with the, with the, um, the constant. If, uh, if y is the variable and x is the constant, x minus two, right? Let me make sure. Uh, y is the variable. So the derivative of x times y is just the constant x. And then y is a variable, the derivative of minus 2y is minus 2. This seems correct. And we can use this Jacobian to try to classify the fixed points. Um, almost linear is a given. Um, we can have infinitely many fixed points. If we just have finitely many, they're automatically isolated from each other. So we have two fixed points, they're isolated, no problem there. The question is, if we want to analyze both these fixed points, um, are, do either of them give zero as an eigenvalue? If either of them does, we can't analyze the fixed point using the Jacobian. And in this particular case, 
one of these fixed points is going to work, the other is not. Um, in particular, if we plug zero comma zero in here, the Jacobian becomes this. And I'm just going, going to tell you without messing around on our calculator that the eigenvalues here are zero and negative two. So one of the eigenvalues is zero, we cannot use the Jacobian. We have to come up with some other method. What about two comma one? So X is two, Y is one. Let me try not to mess this up. So Y is one, so I'll stick the one in for here. X is two, two minus two is zero. So there'll be a zero there. Um, X is two, Y is one. So four minus two, could have a two up here. Then X is two, should have a negative four there. And I don't know the eigenvalues offhand, so we'll, we'll put the minus lambdas on the diagonal, and we'll take the determinant, and we'll see what happens. Lambda squared minus two lambda minus negative four, so plus four. Let's see, does this factor, or are we just gonna have to hit it with the quadratic formula? I want to say this doesn't factor. So lambda equals negative B plus or minus. Let me separate this so we don't blend in. Negative B plus or minus the square root of b squared minus four times a times c over two times a. Let's see, four minus 16. So there's how I make it. And the eigenvalue is complex. And um, see, a benefit, like when we're using the Jacobian and we're just trying to classify stuff, you know that in general, I mean, because you had to do it on the homework and you presumably had to seek computer assistance, finding a complex eigenvectors of complex eigenvalues, not something you can really do. I mean, just short of telling a computer to do it for you. But to classify this fixed point, we don't need the eigenvectors. Um, the fixed point is going to be controlled 
the fixed point is going to be controlled by the real part of the complex number, which is going to be one. One plus or minus the square root of 12 over two times the imaginary unit I. And now we just go back to, I mean, the essentially, I, I never wrote a table down, but we essentially have a table of possibilities. And if we go to the possibility where the eigenvalues are complex and the real part is one, we find that it is a neutrally stable center. So, we failed to analyze one of the fixed points, but we successfully classified the other fixed point. And that's the Jacobian. And I mean, if I don't talk, if I don't do more examples now, it's because we're going to be doing more examples next week in an applied context. Like we'll be looking at Jacobians where we have some kind of real model attached to it. And we're going to be looking at some actually quite famous models. We'll look at the SIR model of diseases. We'll look at the Lotka-Volterra predator-prey models. Then we'll look at, I'm thinking at the name, but we'll look at models of armed conflict trying to predict the winner in a military engagement. And there might be one or two more. Those are the ones I can think of off the top of my head. I will, um, I guess I announced the test for next week. Um, that's fine. It, it's going to be a lot of this, I'll tell you now. A lot of find fixed points, use the Jacobian to classify fixed points. I mean, and then just because we did spend time on it, there will be some. Here's a system of differential equations, solve the thing using eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So nothing unexpected, I will say, not uh, directing this at anyone in particular. There are students in this class who have not been keeping up with the homework. I would really not recommend making the test the first time you practice this material. If anyone in the classroom or any online student who is listening to this recording has not been doing the homework, I will still look at it, and you really ought to, or at least that's my advice as your professor. And with that, I will end this recording.